Good evening, boils and ghouls. It is me, it is I, your old pal Collector, bringing you the chills and spills again for another Friday Night Fable Fright. And tonight, from my shelves of shrieks, I have a different book written by J.B. Stamper, a collection of 13 scary stories, all compiled into one little term called Night Frights. Night Frights was an Apple paperback published in 1993 by Scholastic Inc. We've tackled some of JB's other work on this channel, and you can check them out here. And in tonight's little ditty, we crash a slumber party that turns terrifying when one girl learns the legend of Bloody Mary. Shall we begin? The five girls were sleeping over in an old house that belonged to one of their grandmothers. The house was big and drafty, but the friends were gathered around a fireplace in the study. Michelle threw another log on the fire to keep it going, and they all watched as the embers glowed brighter, and the orange-tipped flames jumped up from the dry wood. Suddenly, there was a loud crack as the wood began to burn, making everyone jump and laugh nervously. Want to tell scary stories? Michelle asked in a soft whisper. At first, everyone was quiet and just looked at each other's faces in the firelight. My older sister told me one last weekend, Kate said. It's called Bloody Mary. Everyone stared at Mary. Then Michelle grabbed her hand and said, Look, no blood. Well, I'm not talking about our Mary, Kate said. I mean the real Bloody Mary. She was Queen of England a long time ago. So why was she called Bloody Mary, Ellen asked. Because she liked to chop off people's heads, that's why. If someone didn't do what Bloody Mary wanted, she had them condemned to death. They were led to a chopping block. They had to put their heads on the block, and then the executioner, with a black hood over his head, came up with a big shiny axe and chop! Their heads would roll off. Screams of disgust filled the room. But that's not all, Kate went on. There's an old superstition about Bloody Mary. All the girls drew closer to hear what Kate was going to say, especially Mary. She loved to hear scary stories, and she'd never heard about Bloody Mary before. They say, Kate began again, that Bloody Mary still comes back. They say that if you go into a room with a mirror at night, and you turn off all the lights, Bloody Mary will appear. Kate stopped for a few seconds and looked around at her friends' faces. All their eyes were staring at her, and Mary's, in particular, looked strangely shiny and excited. So you stand in the dark, dark room with no lights on, right in front of the mirror, and you begin to chant the words, I do believe in Bloody Mary, I do believe in Bloody Mary, over and over again, then if you've done everything just right, Bloody Mary's face will slowly appear in the mirror. And finally, you'll find out why she's really called Bloody Mary. Kate stopped talking and all the girls but Mary started to make scary sounds and talk about what Bloody Mary might look like. But Mary sat quietly in the dark, staring into the jumping flames of the fireplace for a second. She thought she saw a face there, staring back at her. But suddenly the fire made a loud crack, and the log broke in two, sending a shower of embers up into the fireplace. Mary gasped and shook her head, as though she were coming out of a dream. <laughs> Look at Mary, Michelle said. She looks bloody. Everyone started to scream and laugh. Mary had drawn so close to the fire that her face was flushed red, and the shadows of the flickering flames made her face look as though it was streaked with blood. Mary felt her hot cheeks and drew back from the fire into a dark corner where her sleeping bag was spread out. The other girls started to tell another scary story, but Mary couldn't concentrate on what they were saying. Her eyes grew heavy, and in her mind, a shadowy face appeared and disappeared until it became part of her dreams.
Mary woke up with a start. Confused about where she was, she sat up and stared into the darkness until her eyes picked out the tiny bright glow of a few dying embers in the fireplace. At first, Mary thought they were animal eyes staring at her. Then suddenly she remembered where she was, at a sleepover, at Michelle's grandmother's house. As her eyes slowly became more accustomed to the darkness, Mary could make out the sleeping figures of her four friends huddled around the fireplace in their sleeping bags. Then, with a shock, she remembered Bloody Mary. The story seemed so real now, as though she had heard it only minutes ago. Then she remembered her dreams, how Bloody Mary had haunted her sleep. Suddenly an idea crept into Mary's mind. It wrapped itself around her brain and wouldn't let go. She tried to force the thought away by concentrating on something else, but it always came back stronger than before. The thought told her to find out if the story was true. To call to Bloody Mary in a dark room in front of a mirror. To see what happened. Almost against her will, Mary pulled her legs out of the warm sleeping bag and stood up in the shadowy room. She began to walk across the room, stepping over the bodies of her sleeping friends. Mary reached the door to the study, pulled it open and walked through. She found herself standing at the bottom of the creaky staircase that climbed up to the second floor. Quietly, like a cat, she crept up the stairs to the landing. The first door on the right was closed. Mary knew it was the room where Michelle's grandmother slept. She turned to the left down the hall and kept walking until she came to the very last door. Slowly, and carefully, she turned the knob and stepped inside. Mary shut the door behind her and felt for a light switch on the wall. For a brief moment, light flooded the room, long enough for Mary to see the big mirror in an old-fashioned frame hanging on the wall across the room. She flicked the lights back off and like a sleepwalker moved slowly, but deliberately, toward the mirror. She reached out in the darkness and touched its cold, smooth surface. A foot away from where she stopped, just then the moon broke through the clouds in the night sky and a thin shaft of moonlight pierced the darkness of the room. Mary gasped as she saw a face appear in the mirror. Then as she watched the face slowly smile, she realized that it was her own. The story isn't true, she told herself. It's just a silly superstition. Then she remembered the words. She hadn't said the words yet. She hadn't called for Bloody Mary. She raised her hands toward the mirror and slowly began to chant. I do believe in Bloody Mary. I do believe in Bloody Mary. She kept staring into the mirror, but only her face with frightened looking eyes, stared back at her. I do believe in Bloody Mary. I do believe in Bloody Mary. The eyes in the mirror didn't look frightened anymore. They were hard and seemed to glow. Mary didn't understand why her mouth was turning into such a wicked smile. But she kept chanting, I do believe in Bloody Mary. I do believe in Bloody Mary. Mary saw that the face in the mirror had skin that was pocked and spotted with a rough red rash and the hair seemed to curl out of the head like black snakes. I do believe in Bloody Mary! I do believe in Bloody Mary! Her voice kept chanting and then suddenly two hands, two bloody hands reached up beside the face in the mirror. Mary stopped chanting and a scream started to rise in her throat as she stared at the face of Bloody Mary in the mirror and saw the bloody hands reach right out of the mirror towards her. The bloody hands grabbed hold of Mary's neck and she began to scream and scream and scream. When her friends flicked on the light in the bedroom, they saw Mary suddenly collapse onto the floor in front of the mirror, running over to her. They saw the blood smeared around her neck. Then Mary looked up at them with crazed eyes and began to chant over and over again, I do believe in Bloody Mary. I do believe in Bloody Mary. I do believe in Bloody Mary. The friends looked into the mirror on the wall, but the face of Bloody Mary was gone. All they saw were their own faces. 
with frightened eyes staring back at them. <laughs> well, there you go. It looks like Mary had a good chance to reflect on her decision of calling upon Bloody Mary. It's been a while since I've imparted my many centuries of wisdom upon you and feel it is my immoral duty to leave you with this piece of advice. Be careful what you believe in in life because it'll be what you get. Got it? Good. And that's all we have time for tonight. Don't forget to head on over to Instagram and follow me on at Old Pal Collector. If you want more myths, monsters and magic, go and check out at Skullbrain Inc. while you're at it. And there's always that little like and subscribe and bell icon down below to be notified when another video featuring my rugged handsome looks is posted. As always, my dear Fright followers, good night out there. Whatever you 